the background. The start of the marathon, 26 miles, 385 yards. Straight away, Salzman. The West German goes in front, Stephanie of West Germany with him. And this is a fun run at the moment. Nobody prepared to take anything on. It's been a, the warmest day during the championships, uh, but just the moment the man started, uh, it's clouded over, which is uh, perfect for them. Uh, he just almost bewildered in sick face. Well, I think I could keep up with them today, David. I think I ran faster than this this morning. There's Alistair Hutton in the shot just behind Steve Jones and right in the corner there, Hugh Jones, the other British representative. Well, you know, they're happier on the roads than they are on a track, so they're just... Uh, they're not, they don't like running around tracks, these boys. They don't train on tracks, some of them. They, uh, they just like the road where they can just get out there and get their head down and run and enjoy it. Two West Germans, 1025 Salzman, 1038 Stephanie, or Stephanie. The leaders, just behind is the Belgium, Van der Venet, wearing 21. Three Britons well up there, Alistair Hutton. Ran the 10,000 metres for Scotland in the Commonwealth Games. And elected to go for the marathon here. Through uh, 800 metres, two laps of the track, in two minutes, 42 seconds. Second uh, lap there, running 80 seconds, so there's still... Uh, Slightly above 520 mile pace. I'll tell you what, they run the last the last two laps, um, or the last half mile faster than the first half mile, that's for sure. One kilometre there, 321. Well, if you think three minutes is world record pace for the marathon, then they're 25 seconds outside world record pace, but you know they're not interested in world record pace. They're not really interested in the time. They're most interested in the title. It's a good trio of ours, Hugh Jones, Alistair Hutton, and Steve Jones. Steve Jones, the second fastest marathon runner of all time. And we're well represented here, and uh, I think we've got a good afternoon's entertainment going to be provided by these three and boys. Nothing's changed in the hammer, incidentally, since uh, you left to watch this. Just to go through the European Championships, it's been a good event for us. In 1938, we had a silver medal with uh, Squire Yarrow. Still that little bit of picture break up. Hugh Jones right alongside. 1950, we won a gold with Jack Holden. 58, a bronze with Fred Norris. 62, gold with Brian Kilby. Also won the Commonwealth that, uh, that year. 66, gold with Jimmy Hogan. 69, gold with Ron Hill, who also won the Commonwealth that year. Bronze, Jimmy Order, who got a gold in the Commonwealth in 66. 1971, a silver medal with Trevor Wright and a bronze with Ron Hill and 1974 gold with Ian Thompson, who also won the Commonwealth in 74. Actually, in many ways, it's, uh, that's been true for some time of Russian track athletics. The mm. sprinters, though, uh, have done better than usual here. Uh, they've had a um, bit of a low spot in, uh, with the sprinters, uh, but uh, it, it's quite true that from 800 metres upwards, they've had problems. Well, one of the reasons given, and it's only a partial reason, because it would be true of Finland and uh, a lot of other countries, is that the winters are so severe that they can't keep the mileage up all the year round. They have to run with stockings and with balaclavas over their heads. Now, that's true of Finland, and they've maintained their traditions, but that's one of the reasons that the Russians give, that the severity of their winters, the demands made on mileage, summer and winter, it's an all-year-round task now, makes it difficult for them to compete with, the, uh, with those who are raised in more favourable climates, although Ebba Vale and uh, Tradiga aren't exactly hospitable <laughs> country for marathon runners. Actually, we saw on one of the shots there that, uh, in fact, at uh, one moment, at least the uh, chasing group had the encouragement of seeing Steve Jones down the road. They could actually see him at one stage then. And there are a few long stretches of road like that on the course where if he maintains this kind of lead, the following group aren't going to be able to get very many glimpses of, of him. And there's the following group there. It looks to me like Hugh Jones leading. Stephanie... Pizzolato in the blue vest, 445, right next to Michel Eric Stahl from Sweden, and Niebuhr, the defending champion. Now Hugh Jones is starting to press on and push the group. Steve Jones 
still way, way in front. Looking down the road behind him, not a sign of the chasing group. Well, that's interesting. Look at the lead. According to that, he's a minute 24 seconds in front. So they're not making any impression. The last time check we had, uh, there were 40 seconds behind, 46 seconds behind. Uh, Hugh Jones' uh, time there in second place, of course, is a little misleading to place him second there because he's in with that bunch. But I think he may well, he's not in that shot. Oh, yes, he is at the back there. So obviously, uh, uh, that, uh, those placings there were slightly misleading. Now, it's Niebuhr, who is the champion, who's starting to push it there. And clearly, he is pushing it. You can tell that by the way the group's stringing out. Uh, Stahl and uh, Pizzolato are apologizing to each other. It's Poli, actually. Pizzolato, no, it was. Um, but they're having to respond now to this powerful Dutchman. Well, he's, he's decided that um, Hugh Jones wasn't going to lead them anywhere, and he's a strong middle race runner. He's not a very quick 10,000 meter runner. He can run 29.30, which is not really world class. But I mean, if you think that Steve Jones went through one 10 kilometer not in 29.46. Uh, Rhodes, they're still chasing Steve Jones. trying to see if Alistair Hutton as well as Hugh Jones is in that group but it's uh, quite possible to tell I think he's not uh, not with that bunch no that following group I think Alistair Hutton is detached from that it seems as though he's going through a bad spell and the trouble in the marathon is once you go through a bad spell it's very very difficult to come back Steve Jones I think now we haven't exactly got the split but it looks as to me as though he's beyond the halfway mark so he's taken them out he's challenged them He's probably going to slow down in the later stages, but the question is, is he, will he slow down too much or will he slow, slow down and just hold on to his lead? That's Stahl, Poli of Italy, Stephanie of West Germany, Pizzolato of Italy there. Salzman of uh, West Germany. Lafran of France. Uh, one of the uh, Swiss there, Larenman. And where's G Hugh Jones at this moment is the question. Steve Jones is through 20 kilometers and he's also through the turning point. He's through halfway. His time at 20 kilometers is one hour and two seconds, which means that if he continues at this pace, he would come home in one hour and two hours six minutes and 40 seconds which would be a new world best in the marathon my feeling is that he's slowing a little they must be standing waiting for him way out in the country but the news is that uh, at uh, 20 kilometers he was two minutes almost in front of the chasing pack and on uh, schedule for something in just over two hours six minutes a world best but in the five kilometers that followed the pace dropped for the leader quite dramatically. And he's now running at around 2 hours 7.30 to 2 hours 8 minutes and slowing all the time. In real trouble now. Our worst fears confirmed. The two Italians, Pizzolato and Bordin, have got him well within sight. Our fear that he started too fast with that really startling... 14, 15 miles are now confirmed because he's going to have a real struggle to finish. I think the possibility of medals has disappeared entirely and you could ignore those timings now, they're quite irrelevant. Because there's the real scene as the two Italians pass Steve Jones. Well, uncertainty is always a problem, and it sometimes produces uh, reactions like that uh, in distance running. At the same time, it's a, a little bit surprising to find an athlete of his quality misjudging it so completely. Well, I've just had a word with his coach, Alan Warner, 
and Alan says that certainly wasn't his race plan. Um, he didn't stick to his race plan, which was to follow them. But uh, when you think that this race may now be won in around two hours ten, and I feel that Steve Jones, if he'd run his, the race a little bit more conservatively, he could have he could have been still in this leading group. But well, that doesn't take anything away from the Italians or the two West Germans. They've judged it right, and the marathon is not about who's leading at halfway. It's about who's leading coming into the stadium. And, of course, it's uh, also not about uh, simply chasing fast times because courses vary so much. And I've had the feeling all along that this is not a particularly fast course. It's OK for about uh, 20 miles. And uh, Steve hadn't hit the difficult part of it, uh, which is about 22. But uh, it just goes to show you can't take liberties. And you have to be a respecter of the distance. They're, they're just through 38 kil kilometers, four kilometers, just over three miles to the finish. And you have to be a respecter of the distance. Saltzman and Stephanie there, the two Germans who've run with the leading group and are, run are both running for that bronze medal. They're they're only yards away from entering the stadium. And I'm sorry to labor the point, but I'm a bit nervous about uh, if they actually have to sprint because until 100 meters from the end, there's only one lane available, and I'm just wondering how they're going to do that. Well, there they are. They're turning to the stadium. We're going to find out. And as they turn in in single file, that's the problem there. How does he overtake? But now there are... I think the markers have gradually moved out, eventually. Italy 1, 2 and 3 in the 10,000 metres, and certain of 1st and 2nd in the marathon. Stephanie on the way into the stadium, and the race is on in the uh, stadium for gold medal. Pizzolato's taking the lead, and Bord is sprinting back. The West Germans anxious to see their own athletes in the stadium, but the Italians now having a real match, and Bordin is looking the stronger of the two. Pizzolato attacked him in the back straight, and they've only the one lane to run in. But Bordin has taken advantage, came back, looking very, very strong indeed. And the time, two hours, 10.53.4. Goal for Bordin, silver for Pizzolato. Hugh Jones in the stadium in fifth place. Meanwhile, Stephanie of West Germany coming home to take the bronze medal. Stephanie on paper, the slower of the two West Germans, but... He's done the business today. Hugh Jones in fifth place there. Uh, we've missed out this man. Saltzman finishes out of the medals in fourth place, but a good run. And Hugh Jones, too, looks up at the uh, clock and stops it at 2.11.48.5.